Yorkshire is by far the largest county in Britain and one of the most varied. Here on the Pennine Hills is sheep farming. Here dairy farming in the central vale. Here haymaking on a mixed farm in the walls. In the West Riding is coal mining. Here also is the oldest of English industries, wool. In the northeast is heavy industry, iron and steel. Here on the east coast, fishing. And many busy seaside holiday resorts. Yorkshire lies in the northeast of England. It stretches from the Pennines in the west to the North Sea in the east. To the north lies Durham across the River Tees. To the south lie Lincolnshire, Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. It is so large an area that it has been divided historically into three ridings, that is, thirdings. West, North and East. The city of York, the capital, is still another administrative area. We are going to start with the West Riding, which contains the great industrial region. Nearly all the big towns and big centres of population are here. Much of the region is dingy and smoky, thick with factories and furnaces and mines. Coal is mined in great quantities, supplying power for many industries throughout the area and beyond. This is a great steel forge at Leeds. Sheffield has the oldest cutlery industry in the world. In this locomotive shop at Doncaster, railway engines are made, largely for export. But wool is still the greatest of the West Riding industries. This is one of the big mills at Bradford where for generations the same families, men, women and children, have made their lives and livelihoods and an international reputation by the manufacture of wool and cloth. Over three and a half million people live and work in the West Riding, three times as many as in all the rest of the county. Indeed, the population grew so rapidly in the 19th century that housing conditions became very bad. Still, in many places, you will see these cramped, grim, back-to-back -back dwellings. But today you will also see new housing estates like this one, built outside the central town area to give workers more space and cleaner air and gardens for children to play in. This black and crowded area lies on the flanks of the Pennines, which stretch from north to south on the west of the county. Here are great open ranges of moors and dales, easily accessible to hikers and cyclists from the towns. Elkley Moor and Wharfdale lie almost at the back door of Leeds and Bradford. On the Pennines there is heavy rainfall, 
which feeds the streams and rivers with ample supplies of pure, soft water. It was on this good water supply that the early woolen industry was founded. And though water is no longer a source of power, it is still very important in the fulling and dyeing processes. No less important, great reservoirs of water are needed for the densely populated towns. Here is one of several that supply the city of Leeds. Look at the map again. North and northeast of the West Riding lies the North Riding, stretching from the Pennines to the North Sea. In the east are the North Yorkshire Moors, with the flat Vale of Pickering to the south. But the largest area of lowland is the Vale of York. Looking south from Sutton Bank, this vast alluvial plain can be seen as a rich agricultural area where farming of all sorts is carried on. This region provides meat, milk and vegetables for the big city populations of the West Riding and of course for the capital of York itself. Here are cattle being unloaded at Foss Island for the nearby York cattle market. York is situated at the meeting point of the three ridings and is a separate entity. It is not a big city, but it is an historic and important one, with an ancient city wall on which it is possible to walk nearly the whole circuit of the former medieval city. The chief importance of York lies in its position as a centre. It is a bridge town and a meeting place of routes and communications between north and south, east and west. York Railway Station is one of the biggest and busiest in the British Isles. Traffic here, express and local, passenger and goods, business and pleasure, goes on 24 hours a day. York is also a market centre for the whole county. Into York Cattle Market come cattle, sheep and pigs, which will shortly be beef, mutton and bacon in the shops. Here too come milch cows and heifers and pedigree stock which will be bought by farmers and dealers for fattening up in the vales. A network of roads out of York serves to link the York markets with other smaller local markets. North Allerton, for example, the administrative centre of the North Riding, is a market for the surrounding agricultural area.
The North Riding also has its industrial area. It is the home of the great Yorkshire steel industry, based originally on the iron ore of the nearby Cleveland Hills. The industry centres on Middlesbrough in the extreme northeast. Two great bridges span the River Tees at Middlesbrough, linking Yorkshire with Durham and the North. This is the famous Transporter Bridge, designed to enable quite large vessels to go upriver to Stockton and beyond. Today, the steel industry is almost wholly dependent on imported iron ore. The Cleveland Hills are nearly worked out. Only a very few iron mines remain. Here is one, the Loftus mine at Skinning Grove on the coast. The ore feeds a blast furnace nearby, perched on a cliff above the sea. The hinterland of this coastal region is sweeping moorland, the North Yorkshire Moors. Much of this country is very wild and very beautiful. The high moors are the home of sheep and wild birds, but in the valleys are farms with cultivated land far up the hill slopes. Like the Pennines, the North Yorkshire moors are a haunt of holiday makers. For apart from the natural wild beauty of the countryside, there are many historic monuments to be visited. Great abbeys, like rivers, all now in ruins, are relics of the very earliest days of Christianity in Britain. Whitby, on the coast, has another such abbey. Whitby today is a fishing port and a popular holiday resort. Even more than the moors, the Yorkshire coast in summer attracts thousands of holidaymakers from the industrial areas to the many easily accessible seaside towns which have grown up all the way along the coast from Saltburn to Hornsea. The coastal scenery varies with the rock structure. In the north, around Sands End, the cliffs are sandstones and shales. South of Filey, this changes to chalk, as can be seen in the towering cliffs of Flamborough Head. From Bridlington to Kilnsey are low cliffs of boulder clay overlying the chalk. These fall away southwards to the flat coastal plain of the Holderness Peninsula that terminates in the growing sandspit of Spurn Head. Approximately halfway along this coast, south of Scarborough, comes the boundary between the north and east ridings. Inland is a sharply contrasting region of the east riding, the Chalk Wolds. This is an area of extensive ploughlands, with scattered farming villages and rolling wooded uplands cut into by grassy steep-sided dry valleys. This region, with its mixed farming, also helps to feed the towns and cities of the west. The administrative and market centre of the East Riding is Beverley. Beverley is another ancient minster town, like York. From the top of its minster, one can look northwest over the walls and south and east towards Hull 
and the flat coastal plain. The city of Kingston upon Hull, to give Hull its full name, is one of the biggest ports in the United Kingdom. It is, furthermore, one of the country's most important fishing ports. It has seven miles of docks capable of handling the largest cargo vessels. Here comes fruit from the Mediterranean. Raw wool from Australia to feed the mills of the West Riding. Pit props from Norway for the coal mines of Yorkshire, Lancashire and Durham. Cut timber from Canada for the building industry. Wheat from the Argentine to make the nation's bread. Out from Hull goes coal for the continent or for ships bunkers. On this quay are hundreds of motor cars which are being exported to America. Here is agricultural equipment destined for India. This ship the Malmo is laden with tractors for the United States. Her cargo is complete and she's sailing on the midday tide. Here she comes, piloted through the lock gates by her attendant tugs. Once clear and out into midstream, the tugs slip their cables and it is full steam ahead downriver to Spurn Head and the sea. All day long, and often all night long too, when the tide serves, this ceaseless turnround of traffic goes on, linking not only Yorkshire, but a great deal of the economy of the whole of Britain with the outside world. 